Hey guys, Carl here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Sony a7S III in 2023. If it's a good purchase, if it's not, I'll let you decide, but I'm gonna give you some good information on this camera right now. So to start off, we'll just talk briefly about what this camera even is. This is the Sony a7S III. It came out in October of 2020, kind of tumultuous time in the world. I got my hands on it shortly after it came out. I purchased the Canon R5 before they even announced this. And then as soon as this came out, I thought to myself, that's a better purchase for me personally. I already owned some Sony lenses. I was kind of trying to get into that Canon uh, ecosystem. I never really gelled well with the Canon R5. Great camera, awesome, super expensive at the time. So I switched back over to my Sony a7S III from my uh, R5 and I never looked back. I've had this camera along with several other ones along the road. I have no complaints. I'll probably keep this camera forever. It'll be one of the ones on my mantle someday that is just destroyed and beat up because I've used it so much. It has a lot of hours on it, a lot of photos on it. Hopefully it just keeps on going for me because I've made a lot of money with it and I plan on making more money with it in the future. There's been a lot of cameras that have come out in the last three years that have kind of taken a lot of things from this camera as this was kind of the first foray into the new Sony ecosystem. That'll be our first segment is the state of technology in 2023. The state of technology in 2023 is nuts. We have so many camera manufacturers producing awesome cameras. And why would you go back in time and purchase something older when you can buy something like the a7 IV that can do 90% of what the a7S III can do? Let's kind of go through each one of those and see what they are. So we have the a7S III in 2020. Then shortly after that, the FX3 comes out and is kind of the camera everybody really wants. I know it's been said a lot, but it is true. Everyone that bought one of these is kind of like, oh, what, did they, what did they just do? They just came out with this camera that I really wanted that's so more video centric. It comes with the XLR handle, it's got S-Cinetone, blah, 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 you know, all the things. And Sony did right at the time by updating this camera to kind of give you a lot of the features the FX3 came out with immediately, but then they kind of fell short on that, stopping that whole trend in basically 2021, 2022, when they stopped updating this camera. Now you have things like the FX6, the FX30, the a7 IV, the A1, the FX3, who all share some pieces of this camera. Some the sensor, some the you know frame rates as Cinetone, low light, that kind of thing. You know, when the, when the a7 IV came out, I thought that was gonna be the camera. I loved the a7 III. It was the best camera I, I had ever had to that point until I got this guy. And it just did everything so well. Using that camera, I realized real fast that, that it's not this camera and it's not the A1. The A1 was amazing, too expensive for my taste, but amazing nonetheless. The A7S III just kept on going. It kept impressing me. Every time I would use it, the image just looked better. It looked more cinematic. It looked more real. It looked just, just a little bit better than the A7 IV did. It's a hybrid camera meant for the hybrid shooter not specific to one thing or the other. Or am I saying you shouldn't buy an a7 IV? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is overlooked for sure is the a7S III. And let's continue down this trend of, of what we're talking about. Let's talk about the few reasons you should buy this camera in 2023. One being the cost. You can get these things for a lot cheaper now. The fact that the FX3 is out now and it does everything this camera does and more with more video centric features within it. Plus you have, you know, like the focus breathing compensation in there, better IBIS. Uh, you have a couple of different things in that camera now that you don't get with this. But the price wise is so much different. You can get this camera right now for around $2,500. 2000 to 25, depending on, on its quality and how used it is, the shutter count and whatnot. That's number one reason is the, is the price of this camera. Number two is in 2023, there's not much more that you can ask out of a camera that this thing can't do. 4K 24 up to 120 frames per second. All these other cameras do that. 1080p up to 240 frames per second. There are other cameras on the market that can't do that right now or can do more than that right now. And it just depends on what you're looking for. S-Log3, 10-bit 422 for the price, can't beat that. Full frame, can't beat that. Can you go with the FX30? Yes, FX30 is a great camera. APS-C sensor, if that's your thing, by all means. You have more lens choices, you can shoot in full frame lenses and APS-C crop sensor lenses, cheaper lenses, more cinema lenses you can buy. There's a lot of things that the FX30 has over this camera that are awesome. What you're not gonna get 
And this is the number one thing, or number two thing, is low light performance. For the price, you can't beat this camera in low light performance. Shooting at 12,800 on an F4, F2.8, F1.4 lens, you have endless amounts of light and it just makes it so nice. And the noise is so well managed in this camera that you can't tell the difference between ISO 640 and 12,800. Maybe a little bit less dynamic range, but you're not gonna notice the difference. So what I'm saying is that the a7S III will keep up with 90% of the cameras that are you know, made in today's day and age. It's still kicking. Next section, considering the alternatives. We've talked about this in depth already pretty much at the beginning and the middle of this video, but we'll just touch on it one more time. Consider your other options. A7 IV, you're gonna get it for cheaper than this camera. The FX30, you're gonna get cheaper than this camera. And that just comes down to what you're doing with it. The alternatives, uh, you can do Fujifilm, APS-C sensors, they're out there. Uh, Canon has their new cameras that are coming out. You can go full cinema line, you can do, I mean, there's so many options when it comes to the alternatives to the A7S III. But price, pound for pound, I still think this is a good purchase. So the end question in this video is, should you buy this camera in 2023? And the answer is, depends on your budget and what you're doing with it. Would I say this is the best camera to take on vacation or to travel with? Absolutely, I think it is. If you're doing photo and video on vacation, or if you're doing photo and video for your business, this is a great secondary camera to have as it's one, usually cheaper than most of the other options that can do the same things it can do on the market. Number two, the low light, crazy good low light, 12,800 all day long with a fast or slower lens, great. Fast shutter speed in photos, you know, you can shoot up to 10 frames per second, awesome. You know, you can get some good action shots with something like that. Almost an endless buffer when it comes down to shooting with the CF Express Type A cards, as it just won't slow it down. I mean, there's so many good things about this camera. Another one, EVF, the EVF of this camera, way better than most of the EVFs on the market. The fact that you have S and Q up to 240 frames per second and 1080p, awesome. Full size HDMI in there, awesome. A rotatable, flippable screen, full frame sensor, awesome. I have an affinity for this camera, I love it. I don't ever see myself getting rid of it. We're, and we're gonna keep rocking this guy until it dies someday. So, with that said, hopefully you guys got something from this. Make sure to check out the a7S III in 2023, as it's still, still, three years later. It's an amazing camera. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you haven't, if you want to, up to you. I'm not gonna be forceful here. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.